Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the 47th episode of the Sira Stories. I hope that you are learning many useful lessons from the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the previous episodes, we were looking at the outcome of the Battle of Uhud, and then we studied the personal events of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's household, which occurred during the fourth year of Hijra. Today. We will discuss a controversial topic, that is, the expulsion of the tribe of Banu Nadir. It was a direct precursor to the Battle of Ahzab, which was going to happen in the near future. The main people who prompted this battle were the people of the Banu Nadir. The expulsion took place after the incidents of Arrajia and Birmauna. If we recall. The tragedy of Birmauna, Amr ibn Umayyah radiyallahu an, was the only companion who didn't die in the massacre, and on the way back, he met two people from the very tribe who did the massacre. He thought that the whole tribe was involved in that massacre, and in misunderstanding, he killed those two men. He, of course, did not know the whole story, so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Said that he would be paying their blood money. The blood money for one person was a hundred camels, for two it would be two hundred camels, which was enormous. According to the constitution of Medina, any time there would be an affair that afflicted the whole city, everybody joined together and helped out. Banu Nadir, the Jewish tribe, was one of the wealthiest tribes of all. So, by the rights of the constitution, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went and asked them for contribution towards the blood money. The chiefs of Banu Nadir showed respect and expressed a willingness to fulfill the request. They told the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to wait until they prepared food to serve him. Thus, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Along with his friends Abu Bakr, Umar, and Ali, sat outside of a fortress, waiting while the Jews consulted privately with one another. Unfortunately, Shaytan prevailed over their honor, and they decided to murder the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They had rage in their hearts after the killing of Kaab ibn al Ashraf. Do you recall that Kaab ibn al Ashraf? Was a half Arab and a half Jew. His mother was from the tribe of Banu Nadir, and as such, the Banu Nadir considered Kaab ibn Al Ashraf to be one of their chiefs. So they wanted to revenge the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they said to each other, "Who will carry this heavy stone and drop it from the roof over the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's head?" Came forward the evil man Amr Jahash. To carry out the deed, in the meantime, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sat waiting for his hosts to come back with their decision, Jibril alaihi salam descended and revealed the plot to him. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam got up that instant and walked away. Abu Bakr radhiyallahu an, along with the other companions, wondered where their leader went. Upon reuniting, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala exposed the assassination attempt made by the Jews of Banu Nadir. Treachery by allies who are bound by an agreement is never a light matter. By plotting against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Banu Nadir had proved that they could not harmonize with the Muslims. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wished to end the alliance, and based on the actions of the Jews. Assumed that they were at war with one another, he therefore sent Muhammad bin Muslima to issue an ultimatum to the Jews. Since they had lost their rights to live with the Muslims, they were to leave Medina within ten days, and any Jew found after this deadline would be in big trouble. Banu Nadir were shocked that how quickly the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam learned about their plot. After receiving this notice, the Jews began preparing to leave. When the news reached the evil Abdullah bin Ubay, the head of the hypocrites, he advised the tribe of Banu Nadir 
to not leave their fortress. He made an oath that he would extend his protection to them. Not only that, he was ready to raise an army of 2,000 warriors ready to enter their fortress and defend them if the situation worsened. He made a promise to the people of Banu Nadir by saying, that if you are expelled, I will be with you walking away from Medina as well. The Jews encouraged such shows of support from their alleged friends. They sent a message to the Prophet ﷺ that they were not about to leave the Medina, regardless of the consequences. So the Prophet ﷺ and his companions understood that it was a call to fight. Delegating the safety of Medina to Ibn Umm Maktoum an and the Muslim flag to Ali radiallahu an. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his troops advanced towards the territory of Banu Nadir and laid a siege on them. The Jews took refuge in their fortress and castles and showered arrows and stones at the Muslim army. As per the rule, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered not to kill women, children, or the elderly. He also taught not to chop down fruit trees, not to destroy horses, or take the lives of cattle except if needed for food. Since their date groves and gardens stood as a barrier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an exception to the rule. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to order his men to cut down the trees and set fire to their gardens. This action sank the spirits of the tribe of Banu Nadir, and after six days to a fortnight of holding out, they all agreed to lay down their arms on condition that they would be allowed to go safely into exile. Their friends among the tribe of Banu Qurayda and Ibn Ubay all failed to support the tribe of Banu Nadir. The Prophet ﷺ showed mercy and allowed the Jews to take all their belongings except their weapons. They carried with them whatever they could, even the doors, windows, and beams of their houses. Thus, the Jews left Medina, most of them settling in Khaybar, while a small group migrated to Syria. The land confiscated from the Jews was divided among the first Meccan emigrants, while Abu Dujana and Sahal bin Hanif radiallahu an, two members of the Ansar, were given lands because of their financial situation. With the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used part of the revenue from the land to maintain his families and the household expenditures for the whole year. The rest of it he spent on the defense and for providing horses and weapons for the Muslim army. Around 50 coats and 50 helmets and 300 swords that had been seized were also distributed among the Muslim troops. With this we come to the end of today's episode. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel Zil Noreen. Until next time, Jazakallahu Khair and Assalamu Alaikum. Uh-huh.